Good morning everyone. My name is John O'Harper from the African Guide Academy. I'm the head trainer here and this morning we are at Quapa Camp. We're going to be taking you through the introduction to our game drive and then throughout the game drive going to be pretty much explaining to you what we expect. Okay, so if you're ready, let's uh, head out into the bush and see what we can find this morning. Okay everyone, so we've come out from camp uh, not too far, just 100 meters and I've chosen this spot because it's sort of just, it's in the first open area that we've got to be able to see some impalas that have just gone behind the termite mound and this is a place where you can now introduce uh, the safety aspects and the etiquette to being on the game drive vehicle to your guests. So some of the, the etiquette whilst being on the vehicle is, is very new to a lot of the guests so for you it might be very simple things but for, it's all new to the guests so um, it's always very important to stop the vehicle, turn it off and face your guests so exactly where I am now from the driver's seat I've just stepped out, you can even step onto the seats and put one knee up as long as you're looking and having eye contact with all the guests on the vehicle including the people at the back seat and then getting onto the actual etiquette and safety. I like to break it up into a few different parts, maybe two or three different sections to the, the introduction. Um, and safety is always first. And the reason for this is that it's sort of the first thing they hear, it's the first thing that is absorbed and it gets to sit there and then some of the other rules that aren't as important can sort of follow until some of the nice fun things that you can add to the aspect, those aspects to the game drive. So the safety aspect of the introduction, you never really want to put it towards your guests as if you're enforcing rules onto them. So trying to give it to them as politely as possible is, is a nice way of doing it. Some of the rules may be, for example, asking your guests to remain seated throughout the game drive. And then it's nice to just add on the importance of why they need to be seated. So for example, uh, hitting a hole or a, 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 a hole that may have been dug by uh, a, a spring hair or an aardvark that you weren't aware of and you turning back to look at your guests and all of a sudden you hit a bump and if those guests are sitting up, uh, standing up, they may injure themselves. So this is an example that you can give them and this is a way in which they can understand the rule that you are enforcing now. And again, just elaborating on some of those safety rules is is quite important. Uh, you have to remind yourself that some of the people that you're going to be guiding could be extremely high-powered business people, CEOs, directors of massive companies, corporate companies, and so they are absolutely not used to uh, people telling them what to do, especially people that are younger and have a profession that is not as seen as uh, sort of the status of theirs. So what we expect of you uh, through your introductions if you have a look in the manual under guiding principles you'll see that there's a list of about 15 different points that are needed to be mentioned during your introduction and those can simply be broken up into three different sections uh, five points that's not too difficult to learn but that is very very important for you to observe and rehearse maybe you want to do it in the mirror or you have a family member at home that's willing to listen to your game drive introduction but at least it's practiced and rehearsed so that when you arrive here it's not something new to you and you don't need to now spend time rehearsing it. Um, yeah, so that's one tip that I could definitely give you to try to practice before coming out here. Okay, so now we've wrapped up the introduction, let's head out on our game drive. Okay, so now we've headed out into the bush from our introduction and I've driven around for about 5-10 minutes now and I've come across a nice open clearing and I'm just sort of scanning around and having a look. It's early morning, so the, the understanding of the pattern of the drive is, is, is very important. It's going to be very different to the other side of the day when we head out in the afternoon. And uh, the game drive needs to be sort of one flow, if you like, from the beginning to the end. That doesn't mean that you need to stick to one pace throughout the game drive from the beginning to the end but it's something that you need to be aware of. The flow of the game drive or uh, maybe the momentum of your game drive is, is very important. So when understanding the momentum in the morning, we don't just go out and start maybe, for example, picking plants or interpreting trees, 
uh, looking at uh, birds and insects straight away. Uh, the first part of the day is a very important part of the day to be listening out for signs of the wild and, and also taking the time to just look carefully at the road ahead or maybe at a junction for any fresh signs or tracks of animals that have been walking around in the evening. So the first part of your morning game drive is going to be made up of track and sign and, and actually looking for animals to view for the day. So talking about the morning game drive, splitting it between the first section where we start looking for tracks and signs and, and communicating to your guests what you might be doing. And, and so it's just really using a technique uh, I like to call thinking out aloud. So just letting your guests know what you're seeing and what you might be thinking of planning your next uh, route or your, at the next junction you're going to turn left because you've seen some lion tracks on the road heading in this direction. And so this is simply the, the, the beginning of the game drive. And if maybe you come across some animals, then uh, you can start your sighting, which we'll, we'll talk about in a short while. Uh, but thereafter, after you've found some animals and you've viewed, then the momentum of the game drive can sort of slow down to a pace where you can start interpreting plants and trees and stopping for the impalas and zebras that you, you know that you're gonna go out there and find every day. So again, using the beginning part of the game drive to maybe look for some of the animals that are much harder to find during the day and, and dedicating your time to, to seeking them out. And, and it's a very exciting part of the day. Your guests are willing to, to invest their time in seeking out the animals, which are very difficult to see. And that's, that's also something that you must just remind yourself of uh, every day when you're going out there. So talking about one of the techniques, thinking out loud and uh, how you can utilize it throughout your game drive. Remember, before you've headed out on game drive, maybe it might have been at dinner the night before or, or lunch uh, the afternoon before your, your game drive, and uh, this is the, the time where you're going to be finding out from your guests what interests they might have or, or what they've come out here to do specifically. Maybe it's photography, maybe it's bird watching, maybe it's seeking lions. So once you've found out these interests from your guests, this part of the morning game drive that I'm mentioning is a time where you can think out loud. It's also a time where you can think out loud and use that link between what your guests' interests were and what you might be following up on. For example, Bill last night was asking me uh, if we could go out this morning and he's really interested in looking for lions. and. We so happen to have come across some lion tracks this morning and so Bill, I've managed to see some lion tracks here so you know we, we've got a chance this morning, let's see if we can follow up the, this morning and, and, and find him. So exactly this is the technique of linking and thinking out loud. So everyone, we've been on game drive now for about an hour and a half. We followed up on some lion tracks uh, that we found this morning and managed to find some lions sleeping. It seems like they were very active during the evening, uh, feeding with full bellies and, and now they're sleeping. So yeah, we've had some luck. Uh, we viewed them for like I say, half an hour or so. Um, and now we've left the sighting. And I've mentioned to the guests that uh, the second half of the game drive now is going to sort of slow down. We're going to find a place to have some breakfast and tea and coffee. And, and even a place to have a cigarette break or a comfort break behind some bushes that uh, I'm going to make sure are safe to go behind if you need to go. Um, yeah, and so this part of the game drive, after leaving the lion sighting, um, let me just reiterate that we don't always find these animals. And so some mornings, some afternoons, you're not going to be so lucky. And uh, so that might be a, there might be a point where you've got into the game drive maybe an hour, hour and a half or so, and you've been seeking these animals, but you haven't found them. So that's a point in which you're going to have to say to the guests, okay, everyone, we've put in quite a bit of time looking for these animals, but unfortunately this morning we have not been able to catch up and find them, catch up with them and find them. So what we're going to need to do is carry on with the game drive and, and keep it interesting for the guests. So maybe starting to look for something else, maybe some general game, maybe starting to interpret 
some plants, some birds, some insects, or some just some interesting general information. Okay, so when we are talking about momentum and the flow of the game drive, we relate it to how we drive quite a bit too. In the sense that if I need to get to a sighting or maybe get to an area where I can hear some audio, for example, I can hear a herd of elephants trumpeting uh, within a thicket or an island up ahead of me and so I can just simply lift the speed up and let the guests know I can hear the elephants up ahead everyone and so I can increase my speed and when you do this your guests are going to feel the speed increase they're going to hear it and so their excitement levels are also going to increase with that you've got to be aware of this um, it's also something that you need to uh, understand that you're in control of too, that anticipation of, of getting to the sighting. And so speeding it up a bit to get to an area is always uh, something you might need to do. But then just be aware, when you get close to the animals again, you just need to bring the vehicle speed down and also the sound of the engine would need to come down with it. And so this again is just controlling the flow and the momentum, it's, it's not keeping it at one speed throughout the game drive. It's not this mon monotone or monotonous speed that's, that becomes very boring on a game drive. If you can raise the speed and explain why you're doing it or slow the speed down sometimes while you're doing it, it's thinking out aloud again and it's making guests understand why you are driving the way you do. Okay everyone, so we got to the point of our game drive now where we're going to need to find a place for breakfast and tea and coffee and a toilet stop. Okay everyone, so this is where I have found a nice spot for breakfast, for tea and coffee and for a toilet break and let me explain to you why. So if you have a look around over here, we have this amazing view. It's uh, almost uh, 270 degrees in fact. I picked this termite mound over here because it's quite large. You can walk around both sides. I've gone and checked it already. I've just sort of clapped as I approached it. I've also walked around the edge not too close to it just to, in case something like a lion was lying behind the, the, the termite mound. Once I've checked it and made sure it's safe, I can then come back to the group and let the guests know that it's safe for them to go. I usually try and uh, allow the ladies to go to the, the restroom first. Um, it's a lot uh, easier for the guys to find a place to go. Um, and so just something to think about. All right, Jono, so you mentioned clapping your hands when you go behind the bush. What's that for? Well, simply, Grant, just to let any animals know that might be lying in the grass that our presence is here and that we're going to be walking towards them. So just simply making a small clap will allow the animals to raise their heads and allow you to know that they're there. When, when you found your spot and you know exactly where you're going to be stopping for breakfast, tea and coffee, it's a nice idea just to drive off of the road, making sure that the back of your vehicle is at least a foot or two from the edge of the road. Uh, if another vehicle wants to pass, you don't need to then move the vehicle again. Um, this allows you then to have a nice place to set your breakfast up. Maybe you have a small table uh, and so having a space in front of the vehicle is, is quite important. And then something also to remember is if you are gathering all your guests in the front of the vehicle for tea and coffee or for drinks, sundowners or for breakfast, uh, make sure that the, the toilet or the comfort break area is on the other side of the vehicle, on the opposite side. And that way you won't be having drinks or, or breakfast and your guests are looking at your other guests while they go for a comfort break. So something to always bear in mind. Once you've stopped for your break, it's quite important after you've found a comfort break spot or toilet spot that you then mention to your guests how the procedures work behind that. On the game drive you usually have toilet paper and brown paper packets uh, which you can offer to your guests. Uh, we also have a few other tools like the spade. Some, some people might take a, a, maybe a small uh, garden spade on their game drive. Uh, and this is, these are the tools in which you can use to dig a hole um, and leave anything buried in there. Or if you ha alternatively have brown paper bags, 
uh, guests can take them with and, and put any toilet paper or anything else that they need to within those. Of course, uh, having the spade is quite important to, to dig a hole uh, so you can bury anything that uh, is left behind. Okay, everyone. So, a very important part of the game drive is getting into a sighting. There's quite a few techniques that we're going to talk about, or I'm going to keep it brief, um, but some things that you really need to be aware of when, when moving into a sighting. So one of the first things that I'm going to mention is the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock uh, windows. So first of all, looking to our left at 10 o'clock over here, and then moving across all the way to the side here, which is 2 o'clock. Now these, between these points are the best game viewing windows for your guests. Now you can imagine if I just sort of imitate you, they're sitting looking in this direction. This is the easiest way to look left and easiest place to look right over here instead of looking over your shoulder to the right or over your shoulder to the left which is very uncomfortable. So you really just trying to make it as comfortable as possible for your guests to enjoy viewing the animals. And let's not forget that typically we are on a photographic safari and so guests are using their cameras uh, and so swinging it out to the left or swinging it out to the right is going to be the easiest window for them to take photographs. So when moving into the positions looking at the animals at 10 o'clock for example, uh, the guests on this side of the vehicle are going to have advantage being on that side. Uh, bear in mind that the guests on the opposite side of the vehicle might not have a, a great game viewing opportunity. So after a while you may want to reposition the vehicle which allows the guests on the opposite side of the vehicle to get uh, the premier viewing position. And so again then swinging it from 10 o'clock and moving the vehicle so the, 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 the subject is at 2 o'clock. Okay everyone, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to put you in the position of where the animals are and we're going to reenact uh, me coming into a sighting and you the animals. And so I'm going to go through uh, the the first initial view or sighting of the an, of the animals and so I'm going to stop the vehicle and I'm going to show the guests and so this is the the first view um, of the animals you want to be able to turn the vehicle off and point it out make sure all your guests have actually seen what we're looking at after they've all seen then you can have a look at the animals make sure that they're comfortable with your next approach and then approach what you're going to notice, I'm not going to drive straight towards the animal. I'm going to give a little bit of an angle or what I refer to as a bit of a berth. And, and as you come around them, you can slowly creep towards them, but never driving directly towards the animal. So here's a perspective. Just imagine you're a fairly nervous leopard, haven't spent much time around people. Here comes Jono on his drive. He sees the leopard, decides not to stop doesn't use the proper approach and now he's coming directly at me I have no idea whether he's gonna stop in time or not obviously I'm gonna jump up and run away right and here comes the same Jono after a few more years of guiding experience and he spots the leopard and he's gonna give his guests what we like to call the moment of discovery they've seen the leopard everyone's gonna get an immediate shot of the leopard but remember this animal may jump up and run away so this might be the only chance they get it also allows everybody time to just digest. Once we've had the moment of discovery, everybody's got a shot. John is going to ask them, are you guys keen to get a little bit closer? And he's going to start the vehicle and approach watching the body language of the leopard. All right, everyone. So now I'm gonna be talking a little bit about what we can get up to as a guide during the sighting. So. Uh, the, the example here is, or the role play that we have here is that we've just arrived now in our leopard sighting. There's a male leopard lying over here just next to the edge of a sage thicket. Um, and we've had our moments of discovery as we've come around the corner as you noticed. Um, and then we've approached the sighting in low range uh, just to give more control of the vehicle. And we've chosen to move to the right hand side and look at the animal at 10 o'clock. The next thing you're going to do is turn the vehicle off and then straight after that is the volume control on your radio it needs to go right down to a minimum so you can just hear some of the other guides or camp on the radio. 
So now we're going to be going through a little bit about the interpretation once we've arrived in the sighting. Uh, first of all, the moment of discovery has not ended. You may have got the first moment of discovery when you came around the corner, uh, but now that you've parked in your viewing position, it's a nice time for your guests to now look at the animal and uh, maybe start to take photographs of the animal. Um, and maybe even just to let them know that they can even use their binoculars to get a better look uh, at this moment. Once your guests start to watch the animal and view it through the binoculars or their lens, it might be a time where you can start to point out certain things, maybe uh, the markings of the animal, uh, maybe its tail, the whiskers, whatever it might be, the paws, uh, the subject of, uh, it might be whatever you're looking at at that present time. Maybe this leopard is lying that its belly is showing its, its nice white color underneath, whatever it may be. Once you've, you've done this for a short while, you can then start going on to the interpretation uh, in a little bit more in depth, uh, using those techniques of who this animal is, uh, why this animal is here, uh, where it's come from, where it's going, and, and how it got here, and, and how it's living its life. And so these, these small uh, parts of words that we can use to start going into uh, more in-depth understanding about the animal. Okay, for example, we know that this is a, a male leopard. Um, I know this specific individual because I look at its spot patterns and its markings and so now I can interpret uh, who it is and it's a big dominant male leopard for example. It has a, a very large territory. We see it maybe once every two weeks when he comes to this part of his territory. Um, I can then start to maybe talk about where he's going. He may be going to another area of his territory um, and this can then let me start elaborating on a lot more information about leopards in general perhaps um, and it allows me to start talking about other subjects. So just bearing in mind these words who, where, why, how and, and uh, when uh, is always going to be a, a huge benefit for you to be able to, to bring the sighting to life. Okay everyone, so just in terms of orientating a direction around the vehicle for, for you and communicating to your guests, um, we use quite simply the clock, uh, 12 o'clock is straight ahead of us and directly behind us would be, then be 6 o'clock and then so to our left would be 9 o'clock and to our right would be 3 o'clock. So when stopping and trying to get your guests to look at something very quickly, maybe it's a bird or maybe a leopard that's about to move into a thicket, you can say, have a look quickly between 12 and 1 o'clock, everyone. And exactly this is the, the, the direction everyone now needs to look in. Uh, you can maybe mention this in your introduction, if you like, or maybe somewhere along the beginning of your game drive, maybe it's your first sighting of Impala, and then you can explain to guests simply, uh, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So once you've got your guests to look in a specific direction, for example, I've got my guests to look at 9 o'clock at this termite mound over here, um, but there are two termite mounds, so I need to now mention the distance. So once you've got direction, the next step is giving a distance. So you can say the first termite mound. Uh, you may also use a distance, it's 100 meters away, as opposed to the second one, which is 200 meters away. Alright, so talking about uh, radio procedures, uh, one of the most important aspects of radio procedures before coming back to the camp is letting camp know that you're five minutes away. Uh, letting camp know that you're five minutes away gives them the chance to prepare to welcome you and your guests back from game drive and get uh, any last minute preparations done before the guests get back. Um, it's also a, part, a time where you can let your guests know that they're five minutes from the end of their game drive so that they can prepare to get ready to disembark from the, the vehicle. So, how we do this is quite simple. Uh, knowing five minutes before getting back to camp, having a few reference points around your concession on the roads that take five minutes to get to camp from. So simply picking up the radio and, and calling camp. Quapa camp, Quapa camp, come in for Jono. Quapa camp, 
Cropper Camp, we are five minutes out. Okay. And it's as simple as that. So just making sure that you call them um, Quapa Camp, Quapa Camp, come in for Jono. So at least they can hear not just the first time you call them, but the second time. Uh, this gives them the chance to hear the, the radio being uh, worked and then they can hear that the message is actually being directed to them, Quapa Camp, for the second time. And then you can say who's calling them. So in this matter, it's me, Jono, um, but maybe it could be the Quapa mobile vehicle um, or whoever you are. And then just simply letting them know that you are five minutes out. And then they will respond by saying copy, letting, the, letting you know that they've received your message. So how to use the radio, it's pretty simple. Uh, making sure that your volume button is to a point where if you send a message, you'll be able to hear one coming back at you. And uh, when you want to send a message, it's quite simple. Like I say, you just press this button down and then talk. For example, Anthony, Anthony, come in for Jono. Uh, how do you copy me? Copy. And so yeah, as simple as that. Uh, what we just did there was a test as well, um, asking how you copy me um, and then that person can give you a rating between one of five. Five out of five being 100% clear, one out of five being maybe 20%. So when we're using the radio, we try to keep our messages as brief and as short as possible. Um, we want to communicate uh, the location, uh, the whereabouts, what the animal's doing at a sighting. Um, and so we just think about very simple topics to, to mention. So for example, uh, locating an elephant over here, stations located an elephant bull, stationary feeding on Mongoose Alley, 100 meters south of Quapa Camp Road. And so this message has been able to give the position uh, what the species is, um, of that species, the type of social structure I've, I've managed to give, and I've also managed to say what the animal is doing. And so these small pointers uh, gives a very clear message to any other guide uh, what this animal, uh, where this animal is, what it's doing, who it is, and, and maybe if it's worth uh, approaching the sighting. Some of the other radio lingo that we'll use, uh, you've heard me use uh, uh, calling someone. Uh, so Anthony, Anthony, come in for Jono. And then Anthony would respond, go ahead, Jono. Um, so those are quite simple terms. Sometimes we want to uh, say affirmative. Maybe we've copied an, a message uh, or maybe we didn't uh, copy a message or we haven't done something and we would say negative. So yes and no would just be simply changed to affirmative or negative. <clears throat> There's another term we use. Maybe I'm in the middle of talking about an animal in a sighting and one of the other guides calls me, but I don't really want to speak to them at the moment. So I can lift the radio, press the, the, depress the microphone and just say, stand by or stand by one. And when you hear this, you must understand that that guide is unable to speak to you at that present time. So don't reply, just simply keep quiet and wait for a few seconds or a maybe 10, 20 seconds and then that guide might have the time to get back to you. And again with uh, radio communication, we, we have a radio language and an, an, an alphabet. Each uh, letter of the alphabet has a word that goes with it. So you'll find that in the manual, again under guiding principles. Um, alpha, Beta, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, these are the examples of the first uh, few letters of the alphabet. It's quite a valuable uh, tool to use. Maybe if you need to communicate, communicate a guest's surname, you can use this alphabet to just get the, the, the right letters through the correct spelling of a name uh, across the radio. With radio etiquette, as guides we need to be very aware that this radio will impact on guest experience. So it's, it's very important that we try to keep the use of the radio to a minimum and we, we try not to let the radio take control of our game drive. So 
keeping messages uh, brief and short would, would be keeping personal messages out of it uh, and, and also pleases and thank yous they can be left to you after the game drive when you meet up with the other guides. And it's also very important uh, that you must understand that when you speak on a radio uh, your voice is being heard by all other guides out in the field as well as their guests. So be very careful of any emotional messages being sent through the radio. Um, that can play a very negative role on your game drive and on everyone else's. Alright everyone, so now that we've wrapped up our radio procedures and etiquettes, we're going to be heading back to camp. Alright, let's, let's head out.